What's up, brother? How you doing? Mm, 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 mm. So, uh, just what's your feel uh, after the changes you guys made to the roster this summer, just where you guys are in the field, uh, hitting the, in the training camp? No, I think I think our roster has continued to get better um, throughout my time here. I think we, we added depth. Obviously, DeJounte is a really good player. Uh, he can put pressure on the rim. He can create others. He's a good defender. He can score. Um, he's hit big shots down the stretch of the game, so he has that uh, ability to be able to, to take over um, when necessary. And he loves the game. Um, we, we obviously share the same birthday, so DeJounte and I have known each other for years. It's funny, we've been texting each other happy birthday for like seven years and now we're teammates. <laughs> so it's cool to, to see how he's grown and, um, as a player and as a man. And then obviously uh, we've added Tice uh, and uh, we have continued to, to figure out ways to add just more depth to our roster um, each year. So um, I'm excited about the season. I think the West has continued to get better. And um, I think for us, it's about Consistency is about health and uh, playing our best basketball at the right time. And with all the perimeter talent you guys have, there's a lot of mm -hmm. talk about you know what you guys can look like when you go small ball, when you get all of you guys out there. Mm -hmm. uh, just what do you think about just the potential this team has uh, when you kind of play those units and get all of that talent on the floor? Yeah, we got a lot of depth. Coach has a lot of different options, and, and um, he has the ability to utilize a lot of different lineups. Um, based on speed, athleticism, based on length, defense, uh, whatever the case may be, I think he has a lot of options. And I think for us, it's about continuing to work, continuing to do your job, continuing to get better, um, and being able to put your your best foot forward each day. Um, just you know, with a, a lot of time to digest that playoff series against OKC, you know what mm. made them so tough defensively? Um, where do you feel like? I mean, Dejounte's here now, but like, where do you feel like you guys can, I guess, be better offensively? Yeah, I, I think. This series was obviously difficult for us. They're a really good defensive team. <clears throat> they do a good job of showing bodies, you know, creating walls and, you know, forcing kick out threes. And we missed open threes and myself included. We missed some good looks um, throughout the series, but they protect the basket. They force you to play in the mid range. And, you know, it's, it's a really well designed defense. I think for us, we competed, but we just, we were stagnant at times. We didn't execute at times um, or we just missed shots. I think it was a combination. Hard to um, hard to win games when you don't score over 95 points, right? So we had a couple of games where we obviously didn't score enough. We obviously didn't get over 100. Uh, we defended, and in the possession game, we gotta, you know, not give up second chance opportunities and things like that, and get better at that. But I thought we gave ourselves a chance to win. We just um, fell short offensively, and you know, obviously Z didn't play. I was coming off an injury, so I needed to play really, really well for us to have a chance to be, you know, the the number one seed. And I didn't play really, really well. So I think it's about figuring out ways you can improve, figuring out ways you can get better. And um, obviously, this season will be different. Um, we got a long season to go before we get to the playoffs and have a chance to compete in the playoffs. But I think we can all learn from um, things that went well and things that didn't go so well. And the last time the New Orleans franchise made the playoffs in back-to-back -back years, it was like you know, 07, 08, 08, 09. It's been a long time. You guys have got a chance to do that this year. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I know you went to the playoffs you know, almost every year in Portland. Just, would that be meaningful to just, I guess, that consistency of like, Hey, we're a team that's going to win around yeah. 50 games every year, be in the playoffs every year. I mean, would that be meaningful to establish that consistency? Yeah. Whenever you have a chance to compete in the playoffs, um, it means you're doing things right. It means that you have a, a sense of consistency. It means that you're building, you know, the right type of camaraderie, but it also gives your fans something to appreciate and, and something to root for. And I'm a fan of sports, and my Browns aren't doing so well right now. But I think when your team is doing well, um, you want to support them and you want to be able to see them put their best foot forward and also is that you're able to gauge and see like how close are you to potentially winning a championship and the only way to win a championship is to get to the playoffs and compete and to gain that experience so um, that would be you know a really cool accomplishment for us is that the end goal no you know we want to make the playoffs we want to you know win in the playoffs and give ourselves a chance to <clears throat> hang banners but you got to be able to make the playoffs consistently before you can do things like that last year you got a lot of praise for adjusting your role, the team coming to you and saying, CJ, we need you to become more of a volume shooter. This year, with the amount of depth you have at your position in particular, have you already had talks about how you may have to modify both your mental and your, your approach um, to the game itself when you're on the court? Um, 
we haven't started training camp yet, but we have had just conversations about the season, you know, what's to be expected. And I think for me, it's like I've been in the league a long time. You know, I've, I've played the game at a high level for a long time, so I know how to prepare. I know how to adapt accordingly. And I can play with anybody, so I'm not, I'm not too worried about the season. I, I prepared the way that I know how. Um, I did what I was supposed to do to me to be physically and mentally ready. Um, and now it's just up to us to kind of put things together properly, uh, to try to be healthy at the right time, and to just compete at a high level and execute the coach's game plan. But I think for us, we got a really good roster. Um, we got good players. We got good staff. Uh, we got great fan support. And now it's just about putting together a full season. I think we've been great in spurts. We've been not so great in spurts. And for us, it's body of work. You know, you got 82 games to kind of get ready. Um, for what's hopefully a long playoff run. And that's, a, that's time for the coaching staff to experiment, to kind of figure things out. Um, and it allows players to kind of adapt and grow together. And then, you know, hopefully everybody's playing their best basketball um, in April and May. When you look at the depth of the Western Conference, three straight years you guys have gotten better record-wise, but you're still fighting yeah. for, you know, playing position at the end of the season. How yeah. frustrating is that, seeing the progress record-wise, but seeing some kind of a, a yeah. plateauing of where you are at the end of the season. Yeah, it's it's margins, man. It's I mean we were close to obviously not being in the playing game. You know, we had some games slip away throughout the season. We lost to Utah twice, we lost to Chicago twice, we lost to Memphis twice. So I, I mean you gotta understand and this is some of the stuff that I talk to the guys about and, and they joke and call me Unk now because I'm I'm oldest on the team, but I tell them I'm like we got a chance to be really good, but it's about taking advantage of everything each day. You got to take advantage of games that you're supposed to win and blow those teams out. The games that you're not supposed to win, you go steal a few. But I think bad losses early in the season, they, they hurt, and they hurt worse now because the West is, is, is so talented. Obviously, Zeke got hurt in that Laker game, but if we win one more game throughout the season, that game doesn't matter and it doesn't even happen. So it's like understanding that as you're playing your schedule, as you go through the season and you have games that you call schedule losses, you got games where you feel like this is a nice this is a nice part of the schedule, nice part of the season. If you don't take advantage of those, you can't ever be in position to win a championship because you're not going to get there. And I think that's the understanding that we have to have as a team is if we want to be in the playoffs and not be in the playing game, man, you got to eat what's in front of you. And, and oftentimes we're going to have more talent than the other team. And sometimes we're not. But when you have more talent than the other team, you have to win those games. From the time you first got here until now, just what can you share about the progress that you've seen Zion make just as a person and his approach overall? Yeah, I, I think he's got a better understanding of what it takes to be successful. And I don't just mean the dunks and the finishes. I mean, just <clears throat> successful overall as as a man, as a person in terms of the approach, the confidence, the consistency, how to communicate, how to work, how to work on the right things, how to be more vocal. I think all those things are important. And I think he's getting a better understanding of it. I think some adversity helped build more character for him. He's gone through some things personally. He's gone through some things on the court, obviously. You know, they talked about the, the playing game when we got beat by 50. And, you know, maybe that was the the turning point um, for him to kind of understand, like, this is this is what it takes. This is the type of level you have to be at mentally off the court. And, you know, I tell him all the time, just stack your days. You know, really take advantage of each day. You know, if you look at life, you know, like that, it's easier to be successful long term if you have a plan in place. And I think he's got a better plan uh, for how to be successful. And I think there's some grounding that comes with being a father. There's some grounding that comes with failure. You know, he's been very successful throughout his life since high school. So sometimes when you struggle, it really it really shows you what you're made of. I, I know this really is a part of your job description as a player, but if you could put your you know president of the union hat on for a second, if you, if you survey the league in general, do you think it's an advantage or necessary for organizations to, to pay the luxury tax to be competitive? At <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, let me figure out how I should answer this. I think this is what I really believe. Um, in order to be successful, you have to be willing to spend resources, money. I run businesses. I think you know it's well documented, well known. You spend in the areas that you need to spend in, and you understand your windows. And I think every team has a window at some point. 
Boston Celtics, their window is now, what do they do? They spent a lot of money and then the owners are selling. But I think it's understanding where your window is of success and opportunity. Uh, do I think it's advantageous to go into the tax every year? I think it just depends on where you're at financially and every team, every situation is different. But you do get these opportunities to where you, you could really be successful. You could really build talent and you know, put your best foot forward. And that doesn't happen often. You know, each team has a window, you know, call it over the course of a decade, you'll have a two to three year window where like things kind of like start to fall in place. You draft well, and you're able to get some signings. Maybe you add a couple free agents, you do a couple trades, you hit on the second round pick, you hit on an undrafted guy and things kind of change. I think those are the, the times where you, you capitalize on the moment and you weigh the pros and the cons financially of everything. But I think historically, um, the teams that have taken advantage of their windows, not just with spending, but with being aggressive, I think they have gotten the results that they've liked. And then, I mean, you've seen what Dunleavy said, you know, he talked about it, you know, you spend wisely, but you spend in the right times. And um, I think they, they chose to kind of, you know, gauge as opposed to spending a lot of money right now, looking at the situation, looking at their roster, giving themselves the, the true gauge of, can we really win a championship? Can we really compete for a championship even if we spend? So I think it's it's different. But with the new with the new CBA, which all the owners agreed to, by the way, um, it wasn't like I just said, hey, this is a great idea for everybody. Um, with the new CBA in place, it takes time for people to kind of adjust. It takes time for you to do projections, calculations on what's the what's the what's going to be the BRI, what's the rise each year? Is it going to be what they said it was going to be? Um, what is the tax like? How bad does it hurt? What is it like to withdraw or, or have to give up picks? The dollar for dollar. There's areas that we could we can improve upon with the CBA for sure. There's areas that we 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 got right, and there's areas that we need to, to tinker with. But I think it takes time to figure it out. You have to kind of go through the process, and uh, we'll continue to have conversations, engage it. But uh, to answer your question, I think it depends on the window. It depends on the talent and where you're at. Um, but if you want to be successful, sometimes you got to do what it takes to be successful, and that's spend some cheese. There's been a lot of discourse this summer about how this team could play without a traditional big, um, mm -hmm. and trying to compensate for the rebounding and defending of the paint. Mm -hmm. What does the buy need to be from players who may be asked to do things that they're not traditionally done in the past? Yeah, uh, I think you got to be selfless in order to win, and you got to be willing to sacrifice, and that's individually and that's collectively as a team, and I think the best teams do it when it's necessary. Um, the Celtics, obviously, they just won a championship. They go small at times. They, Porzingis is 7'4", so I wouldn't say, you know, they go small a lot. But Al Horford, Tatum will play some four, some five. Jalen Brown will play some four, some five, depending on the lineups. And you got to be able to guard in the league. You got to be able to switch at times. I mean, you got to be able to play different lineups and be successful. Can you do it every night? And I don't think that's realistic. You got the Joker, you got Embiid. You got some traditional bigs. You got lob threats in the West um, to where it's a little bit more difficult to do it consistently. But in order to win games down the stretch, you got to have you know, your best players on the floor. And sometimes those are smaller players. Sometimes those are uh, wings. Uh, but I think in order to be successful, teams just figure out how to get their best players on the floor and how to get them to play well together. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, CJ. Yeah. yeah, have a good one.